Hey, welcome back, Now We Drive. Thank you so much for joining us here again on the channel. Got some uh, updates for you on the Fiat 500 and Nissan Juke. Uh, I've had a few comments uh, on the channel asking for an update because um, you've not heard exactly what ha what's happened to them. They've been sold now. So let's we're gonna recap on the what we did very quickly and what we sold them for. So that's the Nissan Juke and the Fiat 500. And also two new cars we've got on the channel. Um, one is a Volkswagen Polo, a 65 plate, which uh, I bought from Copart up in Sandy. That was a very quick and easy one. I bought it for my son to learn to drive in. And um, I'll, I'll show you the condition we bought it in, how much I bought it for, and what we've done to it to get it uh, back on the road. And it is a great little car, actually. I love driving it. And also, the main project I'm looking at at the moment, which is a um, Mini Cooper, a 68 plate, very low mileage, uh, super duper condition, but it is a water uh, flood damaged car. And uh, it's a bit of a, it's an interesting uh, scenario we've got whereby we're, we're, we're taking parts off, replacing them, then another fault pops up somewhere else. But we, we're getting there slowly. And I'll give you an update on that today, give you a look around the car. Yeah, you can see the progress that we've made to this point. So without any further ado, should we have a quick look at the Fiat 500 and the Nissan Juke? Let's have a look at the updates. So here's the original listing we have for the Duke. The thing that really attracted me was obviously the low mileage, but we're not gonna go over that now because you've seen this in the in the Duke uh, video. All I'm trying to do is to show you the, uh, the damage uh, that was on the car. Both these doors were completely shot. I, I did go to Colchester to have a look and there was no center pillar damage. Um, <laughs> yeah, interestingly enough, it was a little tougher to get the right doors uh, and, and let me explain why. So let's let's have a quick look at how the, the car actually finished. Ended up having to buy two doors, which I actually thought were the right color, and that's what the breaker told me they were, which is the QAB pearlescent finish. Actually, they weren't. They were just the brilliant white, and they were uh, slightly different in color. So I had to take it down to um, my paint shop and get them finished in the pearlescent white. The, the doors were fantastic and, and didn't need any work. They, it just needed uh, blowing over and blending in, which cost me 400 quid for the, uh, because it's like four different layers of paint. So it was a little bit more money than I expected. But overall, really easy car to fix, just literally bolt on, bolt off doors, a new MOT, two front tires, and away you go. The car out of Copart cost me 4,400. The work on it, we ended up doing 400 for the doors, 100 quid for the tires, 40 quid MOT, and that literally was it. I want 40 quid for some uh, Duke mats. But um, overall, it's had over five grand. I actually put the registration number into webuyanycar.com and it, it came out as 2,600 pounds, and this was non-cat, which I couldn't believe. I, had, I, I stuck it up on Facebook and eBay, end up getting a buyer, really nice girl, uh, and her father popped round to have a look at it. Pretty much the first person. It took me a while, actually, because I first put it up for 6,995, and then 6,495, ended up putting it up at 5,995, and then started getting a few calls on it. So I ended up selling it for 55. So a small profit was made on the Duke. So let's have a quick look at the Fiat 500. As you can see, bit of a ding here at the front and side. It was a pretty easy, straightforward fix. And actually, I'm glad it was my first one because it kind of just got me into the swing of things, of, of sourcing parts, fixing it, etc. cetera. Um, I've got exactly the right color, um, the bonnet, the grill, uh, grill and bumper, uh, and, the, uh, and the wing, all the right colors for that. Uh, added a stripe on. Now I actually lost money on this car. This cost me uh, 21.50 out of the door, I believe, uh, if I remember rightly, which actually subsequently was actually too much money. Even though the car was super clean inside, it, it was a bit too much money I paid for it. Ended up spending another 500 quid on it, 600 quid with all the bits and pieces. Needed a new light as well, which I got a new fog light. Um, ended up selling it to a really nice, uh, a really nice guy for his daughter. And that 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 end, I end up selling it for two five. So I think I end up losing about two hundred and fifty quid on this. There you go, Fiat five hundred Nissan Juke, both gone from the drive. I know the wife's very happy about it. So out of all of the the first five cars that I bought from Copart initially to start the channel, four of them have gone. We've still got the, obviously the John Cooper works, which I'm going to keep as my as my daily driver. And we've got some really exciting mods coming from that. 
uh, for that. We are going to be doing a remap. We've got uh, some um, down pipes we're going to put on it. We're doing a few bits on it to get it to about 320, 330 brake horsepower. Of course, I'm going to cover it on the channel. Really looking forward to getting it out on the dyno, also on the road to get, to get it um, fully tested. And I'm super excited. So you can join me on that particular journey. That's going to be great. Let's now talk about the two new project cars that we bought from Copart. <sighs> Impulse buy? No, not really. Um, it was... I thought it was an amazing, amazingly good value being a 68 plate. Um, when I say it was low mileage, I actually didn't know that, what the mileage was when I bought it. Because of water damage, um, the, 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 the ECU was actually flooded and there was no power going to, to any, well, there was no power at all. I didn't get a chance to actually go and see it in Sandy. I had a good look around it. You could kind of see where the water line was, which was just, just, just inside the footwell, about an inch up. I was looking around the schematics of, a, of the Mini Cooper of the of the later F, F56s and possibly could have gone, there's a module next to the automatic gearbox and also um, down in the footwell was the main BDC ECU unit, which again, could have been a bit of a problem. My main worry was always going to be did we get any ingress into the engine? Because speaking to a few people, they're saying that if the engine would have got flooded while it was driving, it could have caused a huge amount of pressure, could have, con rods could have been broken, there could have been valve issues, etc., etc. And that really worried me because I was literally buying it blind. But buying it for what I felt was a really, really good price, given if it was a low mileage car under 10,000, been a 68 plate, um, I also phoned Mini to find out the kind of spec, and I'll go over the spec with you in a little bit. Um, but I knew that it was worth somewhere in the region, this is retail value, so non-category car, retail value of around 17 to 18,000 pounds, given it's not even a year old. So I was willing to take that chance of possibly a new engine or a number of electrical faults that we'd have to go, go through. So let's have a look at this uh, Mini Cooper, as I saw it on Copart and uh, let's go over what I was looking for in the car before I even started to bid. So here is the Mini in question, the 2018 Mini Cooper Auto. I love this color combination, black wheels, the, uh, the really, really super looking car. The bodywork from my initial investigation looked awesome. Really, really good, untouched and super, super clean, as you would imagine. Love the interior, those beige, full beige leather interior, with the, uh, with the gray piping, absolutely fantastic spec car. Obviously I was concerned about the electronics as it was an, uh, wasn't a run and drive or even a it just engine didn't even start. But um, overall, I thought this was uh, a, a chance worth taking. Did, uh, I did bid uh, 6,700, it took about a week, week and a half to actually get it over the line because the, uh, the actual uh, reserve price was closer to um, 8,500, funny enough, um, but I stood fast and overall, um, after a number of, a bit of toing and fraying with the insurance company, they accepted my, uh, my bid and the car was mine. Uh, <laughs> very excited about this one because I do think um, it'll be a great car to flip. A very funny story. Um, my regular guy that picks up my cars for me, he kept letting me down three or four days in a row, said he was going to pick it up, didn't, said he was going to pick it up, didn't. And I was getting very close to being charged the daily storage rate. It's not a lot of money, 20, 30 quid or something like that, but it's a bit of a pain. I wanted to get the car back. Made a few calls, found a guy local uh, that did only worked out of Sandy. He said he would drop the car off to my local garage um, because I didn't have the, the correct uh, scanning equipment to figure out exactly what was going on with the car. Um, and he said he would do it for 100 quid. So I said, fantastic. He said he could do it the next day. He picked it up from Sandy. I met him at the garage and that's when, and that's when the fun began. Remember, I, hadn't, I didn't know anything about the car. I, I didn't know if there was, the engine was blown or there was water inside the engine or I didn't know anything, pretty much. So all I could see was this car on the back of the trailer. And as you know, at Copart, they drop the car off on, on a forklift, drop it onto the trailer and, uh, or the flatbed and the guy just drives away. Now, the funny thing was, when we got to the, um, 
when we got to the uh, garage to, to be dropped off, the guy said, look, we, we need to try and start this. And I said, no, no, let, let me, uh, and I had a very long handle uh, ratchet and a, and a crank, uh, crank socket to crank the engine. I said, let me go and get it. I went to go and get it from the car and the guy started the engine up. He had a jump, jumper pack on it. Obviously the battery was dead and it started first time and it sounded absolutely perfect. Although every warning light on the dashboard was up and there was some flickering and bits and pieces, it started first time. Uh, for the, and I didn't know at, the, at this point, there was no mileage uh, showing up because obviously there were some electrical problems with ECU, which we found out. But it started, I was like, oh my God, let's not, let's not keep this running for too long. So I got in the car, went to drive it off and I couldn't get it out of park. It's an automatic car, couldn't get it out of park. And I'm thinking, okay, this is gonna be fun. Like, how do we get it off? I said, right, get your dollies out. These kind of, you know, you put them on the, uh, on the wheels and you roll it off. He went, I haven't got those. I don't, I'm not carrying with me on this truck. So luckily I've got a four by four. I've hooked it up and we've literally dragged the car off the trailer um, and we got it onto the, onto the road. I got the, the couple of jacks from, from the uh, garage. We jacked up the front of the car and four of us just basically pushed it into the garage. So we got it on there. And at this point, this is when we started to have a look around the car. And like I said, the, the BDC ECU unit, which we took out was, was absolutely soaked. And we sent it away to a, a, an engineering company that specializes in these refurbing and, and they said it was unserviceable. Um, so unfortunately, you have to match the, the, uh, the BDC ECU unit to your chassis. And trying to find the right part number on eBay for a second hand unit. These were going for 200 quid, 250 pounds. Uh, I tried LA Mini, I've tried loads of different people on eBay, and I really needed to get the, the, exactly the right one. Now, given it was such a late car, or is such a late car, I didn't want to cut any, cut any corners. So I phoned up my guy in a BMW Mini in um, at Stephen James in Enfield, and if you're watching this, Ash, big you up, sir. Thank you so much for sorting me out. That was amazing how quickly you got it turned around. I went to order the, the ECU unit, which basically sits in the left uh, corner footwell. We'll, we'll put some footage up now to show you where it is and what we've done so far. Um, but we put it in the left, it sits in the left uh, passenger footwell. Went down to buy it and uh, Ash said to me, yep, great, it's £693, including VAT, which... <laughs> It was giving me a discount as well, would you believe? Uh, and he said, I can't sell it to you. I went, why not? He goes, I need a logbook and, or a V5 and I need your, your passport. I went, but well, you know me. I, I've showed you the car in Copart. I went, I'm sorry, I cannot, we cannot release you an ECU um, without those bits of paper. I said, fine. So I'd sent it off. It took about another week to come. V5 finally came, went to see Ash. Great, bought the ECU unit and we plugged it in. Now we know it's got 9,128 miles on it. So it's a very low mileage car for, well, actually for a year old, it's actually quite high, but it was based up uh, in the Midlands somewhere. So it's probably a lot of motorway M6, uh, M1 driving uh, mileage. So I'm really happy. And uh, if you have a look around the car, which I'll show you, it is in impeccable condition. To, to figure out, now, really nice thing about minis is once you're the log, the, the V5 on the V5, you can ring mini up and say, right, how did it come out of the, the showroom? What extras did it have? Any extra maintenance packages, etc. Let me tell you what it's got. Dual clutch auto, uh, it's got run flat, it's got the uh, rear assist camera, uh, electric folding mirrors, roof and mirror caps in black, interior trim piano black, uh, the Panason panoramic glass roof, darkened rear glass, the rear view mirrors anti-dazzle, the side mirrors anti-dazzle and anti-dimming, sports seats all, all heated, park distance control front and rear. Uh, you've got nav with Apple CarPlay, uh, you've got the mini JCW chili pack and it comes with the uh, 17 inch track spoke black alloys. So that's a few quid in, in, in extras. And that's why I know that this car has now the engine and gearbox is fine. Well, actually, I can't tell you if the engine gearbox is fine because we've actually not got it out of park yet, but we're going to get there because what's happened now 
is the instrument cluster has started to flash and stuff. So it needs some programming. We know this. Um, it may have to go into mini because um, there's there's software. So my man Ash at uh, BMW Mini was telling me they have to physically send the software over from Germany on a on a broadband line and flash the car while it's plugged in. So that's why if I'd have put a second-hand um, non-warranted ECU unit, they wouldn't have done this at Mini. Now for, for reselling this car, which um, I expect to do, I would want a warranted, lifetime guaranteed ECU unit in the car. Then it's been repaired to the optimal BMW Mini specification. So now I can roll it up to, uh, to BMWs now and they will um, render it back to showroom settings for its software. That may need to happen. Obviously, we're trying not for, for not that to because it's going to be expensive. That was it, 120 quid an hour or something. So, um, but I don't mind doing it given of the value and the extras of this car and the condition of it. It is absolutely pristine. So the the one thing that I was really surprised about when I actually started working on the car is the the, the seats and the carpets bone dry. I was really surprised at that. So. Over the period it's been sitting, it couldn't have been sitting that long because checking on the DVLA website, it's only it's only had uh, tax put on it. I think it was the 20th of November, 2019. So I've got you know nine months, ten months worth of tax on it, which is fantastic. So it could only been sitting for three or four weeks, and maybe in that time it, it just dried out naturally. But there is obviously there's moisture in the car because. The ECU unit, unit has, uh, has failed, and it was there was a lot of corrosion in there. So, who knows? Uh, it's, it's a strange one. I'll keep you fully updated on the on the mini. As I say, it's a uh, it's an interesting one. I've done a flood damage one before, um, and it really is a, a matter of trial and error. And we have to now we've figured out that it's got the uh, the the cluster issues on it. The clusters can't be wet, but we're just checking that moisture's not been in the car and you've got some moisture inside the clusters that may need replacing. But the clusters are not expensive. You can buy them on eBay um, for 50, 80, 100 quid. There, there's a lot of F56 um, clusters out there. And as all of the information stored on the ECU, I'm sure it'll be fine. Volkswagen Polo. So how have we come about to buy, be buying a Volkswagen Polo? My son, um, he's what, 17 and a bit now. He, uh, hi Zach. Uh, he's, been, um, he's been driving uh, with lessons for, I don't know, five months now, four months, something like this. The only way he's gonna pass quickly is if he goes out more than two hours a week with a driving instructor. What better way to get him on the road than having a co-park car that we can do up and not really care too much of if he has a, a little ding or something like that, uh, yeah, of, of course I don't want that to happen, but it's, it's not gonna be the end of the world. So we started looking around. He initially said he wanted a Renault Clio because that's what he's learning in. But uh, personally, I'm not, I'm not a French car lover. Um, I've had a couple in the past, never really got on with them that, that much. So I've started looking at things like uh, Volkswagens or Volkswagen, the Volkswagen family, A1, Audis, um, I looked at some Ford uh, Fiestas, uh, some Ford KAs, and while I was looking at the the orange uh, Cooper that we bought, I came across this Volkswagen Polo. I thought, hmm, this, this is interesting. Nice low mileage, 31,000, uh, 65 plate, so pretty late. What could possibly be wrong with it? So we, uh, we saw it was a Cat S. I thought, how bad can this be? Okay, let's have a little look around. Bodywork overall looks in decent condition, um, but obviously it's got this nasty, uh, it's got this nasty mark on the door. But I'm thinking, could it be any more than this? All right, the seal needs work. Okay, so that's structural. So maybe that's why they wrote it off as a cat S. Um, yeah, interesting. So there's the quarter panel. Obviously, with me pushing out. Doesn't look like it needs a complete new uh, quarter panel. It can be repaired. The rest of the car was pr 
pretty tidy. So I decided to have a bit of a bid. I set myself a, uh, <coughs> a budget of two five, and it was a pure sell. End up getting it for two one fifty. So with the fees, it turned out to be about twenty, just a tad shy of twenty three, twenty three ninety. I think it was. What I wanted to do, given it was a run and drive, I decided that obviously I couldn't pick the mini up because it was <laughs> it was non-drivable, didn't start, etc. But the Polo was a run and drive and they said it was absolutely fine. So I headed up to Sandy, um, jumped on the train, walked the two miles from Sandy train station up to the uh, up to the auction house at Copart and give my form in, signed a document, etc. and then waited two and a half hours for the car to come out, which was a real pain. But I, unfortunately I did it like two days after a, an auction had closed, so it was super, super busy. Um, got the nod, car was outside, um, went to get in, started it up, went to pull away, and there was this almighty clonking noise from the back. I really didn't know what it was. Now, I, I started to drive, it was like clunk, 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 clunk. I was like, oh my God, what have I bought? What have, what have they not told me about? They said it was a, 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 yes, I could see the damage on the side, you've seen it yourself. What was going on with this car? So, I... I actually contemplated parking it up, leaving it and getting my guy to pick it up uh, in a couple of days time. But I thought, you know what, let's, let's see, what, see what we're doing. So I, I live down the A1 uh, from, from Sandy. So I thought, you know what, let's jump on the A1, let's get it out of the way of Copart. And if it's, if it's if it not handling that well, well, we'll figure out in a bit. So I've reset the, um, the tire pressure monitor. That went away, fantastic. And we shot down the A1. On the way back, popped into my uh, my local garage, uh, high, high Q, which is in uh, Goff Soak. Big up Scott and uh, and the rest of the guys there. Thank you so much. I dragged it in there. I said, Scott, do me a favor, have a quick look at this. We stuck it up on the ramp. Really strange thing had happened. So there is like this uh, bar that goes across the rear axle, which obviously is front wheel drive, the rear axle. And where the forks had gone into uh, under the car to lift it, they obviously not they manhandled it in quite a way. Where as it dropped down, the two springs had just misaligned slightly, and one uh, one had popped out a little bit. And literally, uh, Scott said, "Oh, that's easy to fix." It got a crowbar, just pulled it down a little bit, pumped them both back in. Noise gone. It was like great. He said, "No worries. You've seen the damage on the uh, on the Polo, and." I just wanted to make it a little bit nicer, obviously get the damage fixed. The, the bodywork was something that I, I could not could not have uh, accomplished myself with a, with a small dent puller and a bit of a, a aerosol. Didn't want to do it, I wanted to make sure it was absolutely fantastic for my son. So I took it down to PJ Crash Repairs in, uh, in Potter's Bar. Uh, really nice guy, Paul, if, 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 ever got, if you're local, need a, a bit of work done, he's a really solid guy and just tell him that uh, now we drive sent you and um, he will definitely look after you because he's had a few bits of mine now. So I took it down there and basically he's got it, he's, he's pulled out the, the, uh, the quarter panel and he's he sorted out the seal. Um, he's got this uh, welding machine where it welds pins in it and he winds it up. Really fantastic job and it is, the, the nice thing about it, the in, inner seals of the door were, were untouched. It was just the, the, outer, the outer quarter panel, rear quarter panel and the lower lower seals were, were damaged. Obviously, I bought a new door. Got that from uh, really nice guys up in um, up in where were they in uh, West Bromwich, up in the Midlands. Now, while I was on the phone to those guys, um, it was a hundred quid for a complete door. It was in white, so I was going to have to get it sprayed anyway. But that wasn't an issue. I said to him, "Oh, um, you break a lot of polos." He went, "Yeah, yeah, we've got quite a few." I goes, "Have you got any alloys for a polo?" He said, "You know what? We've just had." Uh, we've just broken a polo, an R, polo with the, with the R kit on it. Really nice 15 inch alloys. He said, two of the tires are great. Two of the, to the front two that we took off, they're terrible. One's flat and one's just bald. He goes, you can have them for 150 quid. So I said, you're on. So 250 quid plus 50 quid um, shipping, 300 quid. I've got a brand new set of, uh, well, brand new, really good condition set of R type alloys for my polo and also got the door. Um, stuck the door in the back of the polo, run it down to uh, to Paul at PJ Crash Repairs, 
and three days later, it cost me, I think it was 600 quid to have the, um, the whole side of the car sorted out. And he did a great job, I must say. He, he blended it all in. Um, we've not, I've not washed it. You'll see how, well, the work he's done. It's not been washed. Uh, it's a little bit mucky because um, one, it's been raining a lot recently, but two, we've just had no time to take the car down to the car wash. But inside it is absolutely pristine. And that car all day is gonna be, retail is gonna be what, five, five and a half K uh, for, a, for a, a really nice condition. Uh, sorted polo what's a cat this is a cat s what's a cat s gonna go for maybe 3k three and a half k possibly but we've got a nice one with really good alloys on it very well sorted and um, yeah my son absolutely loves the car and it's and honestly such a great car to drive it drives fantastic now um, and yeah whenever I get if I'm knocking around and I want to pop around somewhere I'll just grab his keys and just shoot down the road it's a fantastic little car to drive loads of updates coming in the next couple of weeks uh, we we'll hopefully get some more updates on the on the orange mini now we've got some bits coming for it we've got the john cooper works uh we're going to get uh, rolling roaded with the mods that we're going to be having done that's going to be amazing to, to see my watch list on copart is pretty big this week so hopefully another project car coming along very soon uh to give you a bit of a flavor it's a really, really nice um, F-Type R Jaguar that I'm looking at. It's a 16 plate. It's been dinked both both ends. The front end is pretty bad. It's a, it's a non-starter, non-drive uh, car. Um, also, the back end is pretty pretty badly dinged in as well. But I think it'd be a great uh, project car to have on, on, on YouTube for the channel. Uh, it could be quite a long one, but one that I think would be great, especially given it's a great bit of kit and a, an absolute weapon of a car that I'd really enjoy driving for at least a little while anyway. Um, there's a Golf R, um, which I'm looking at. That was a 15 plate Mark 7. Again, looks amazing. Um, bit of a front end, a nudge on it. All the rads and aircon stuff's completely shot. So very similar to the John Cooper works. It's a, it's a Cat S. So there's gonna be some structural issues. There's a, another John Cooper works, but it's a Clubman. Um, it's a much later one, it's an 18 plate. That's up in York. Uh, and I'll have another look at that. Again, that's a front ending. Uh, very similar build to the John Cooper works. Might not do that, um, but again, I'm just kind of keeping my eyes open. Again, thank you so much for joining us here on Now We Drive. Um, I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Take care.